subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel 2017 that's the silver one here on the left versus ipad 2018 that's this copper gold color here on the right now this video comes from popular requests many people wanted to see if it actually performs at all better so we're going to begin this test with a boot up in three two and let's go and see which one actually can boot up first we do have the a9 on the left the a10 on the right now the a10 should be substantially better on paper but will it be better in the real world we're going to see right here so we're beginning with a boot up test i have tested these before this video actually started and i found that the ipad 10 point or this one right here the a10 fusion was a little bit better when it comes to app speed but you can see the older model actually boot up first over the newer model so the a9 is still a strong cpu and if you could find this one on discount it's going to be a good deal quickly confirming both are running ios 11.3 the latest official software all right so we're going to go ahead and do a fingerprint scanner speed test to see which one is a little bit faster or if they're exactly the same so three two and one and you could see it looked like the left was faster let's go ahead and do that one more time just to see if it's human error three two and one and no, it's actually the left that's a little faster. So the older iPad looks a little bit quicker. I put that on the same time. So I put my finger on there at the same exact time. And you could see, no, every time, it seems like the Apple A9 on the left is a little bit faster on the fingerprint. And one last time for good measure, three, two, one. And you could see it's the Apple A9 that has the faster fingerprint on the left here. Okay guys, so you can see everything is closed out on both iPads. Let's begin the application speed test. We're gonna begin this test with calendar three, two, and one. And you can see that is the right. Coming home, let's go into clock, three, two, one. And that is the right slightly. Let's go into the Snapchat, three, two, one. And this win goes to the left on the Apple A9. Let's go over here on the Instagram, three, two, one and you could see wow that was about even on performance there let's go into youtube and you could see youtube opens first on the right and then on the left scrolling about the same on the scrolling looks like there's a little faster of a load time on a10 it looks like this takes just slightly longer to load the feed so let's go into amazon three two one and you could see amazon opens first on the right so ipad from 2018 looking good so far ebay and you could see ebay definitely on the right well then again you could say that the ipad from last year actually won the boot up and the fingerprint so on the left you can see for geekbench there's the a9 again so i'm seeing so far that the performance gains are not really existent there's not really any performance gains here on a newer ipad even though it has the a10 so you can see right there there is the microsoft word let's go into docs and these are some applications students might use google docs microsoft word that looked like it was the right you had to see that from the sign in button which one actually opened first let's go into the netflix and you can see netflix is opened on the wow i think that was the left maybe slightly let's go into offer up three two one and offer up opens first here on the right scrolling about the same on both let's go down here back to the dead trigger now we're getting into some games three two one and see which one can actually open up dead trigger first here wow i think that was about even maybe slightly to the left i did not see that one very great let me know down below on dead trigger two let's go into jetpack and jetpack looks like the right's gonna take it here here's where the graphical power should win over that a9 and there it goes so the new graphics here showing their stuff on the a10 at least on that jetpack joyride let's go into this basketball game let's see if it can load games faster again here on the right and looks like it is ahead and one more time there we go so gaming performance looks like it's going to be better for this new our ipad if you're a gamer also maybe for video editing we'll cover that in a little bit looks like it was slightly to the a10 that was ever so slightly you would have to slow it down in slow mode to even see that let's go into adobe clip three two one and you could see adobe clip opens first on the right just barely i mean it's so slight you would never perceive this unless you've seen these two side by side all right guys so we're gonna run through them this way multitasking we're just gonna see if there's any reloads it doesn't really matter if we hit them at the same time we're just looking for reloads here so no reloads there let's go into temple run no reloads there on both Remember, both of these have two gigs of RAM. Let's go into Jetpack. 
you can see jetpack about the same it looked like basketball stars had to reload because the wi-fi based game let's go into dead trigger and nothing there let's go into offer up and nothing there so good ram management on both so far netflix about the same let's go into docs and that's about the same let's go into word and that's about the same as well in geekbench and geekbench again so look at this performance i mean it's identical you're literally only trading probably just for that apple pencil here because that a10 while it is nice on paper to know you have an a10 there's a reload right there the performance is so slightly different that I don't think you're going to really notice anything. So let's go into Instagram. And that's kind of disappointing because, you know, we want to see, you know, a better performer. And you're just really not going to notice this in a day to day. Instagram had the reload on the left, but there goes Snapchat. So here's where the A10 looking a little bit better, however, is just holding more apps. But really, I mean, if you're focusing on your work or whatever, I don't think you're going to be in opening 17 apps. You know, you got to focus on one at a time. So this is not really a huge deal here. So you can see calendar slightly on the right okay so we're gonna open up this video i did it's about a one minute video and i'm just gonna save it and render it and see you know if it does pretty good on either so we have the same video we're just gonna hit save a9 on the left once again and a10 on the right now there's no saying that this is android and apple it's not optimized These are the same apps for both products so same optimization on both let's go into save to camera roll and it should be saving and let's see which one can actually finish this video first they look very even right now it looks like the a10 might be slightly ahead of the a9 but you can see they're both very fast at rendering your video just slightly going to the right it's really really close here really close and definitely gonna be the wow that was so close it was like almost even they almost finished at the same exact time honestly i see in about the same time finishing so video rendering on both of these is going to be quite good all right so let's just open up a couple of websites to see if it's any different when it comes to the web browsing three two one we're gonna go to apple.com here and it looked like it might have loaded just a little bit better on the right nothing too big of a deal let's go ahead and open up let's see google let's just go to google three two one and you can see Google is just slightly on the right. But I mean, when it comes to browsing, the products we already know have gotten so good that it really doesn't matter these days, you know, which product you get. They all perform well. And you can see zooming is great. Nothing like the iPads of old. Both of these are extremely good when it comes to their web browsing abilities. OK, so the final Geekbench scores are in. You can see on the left, we have 2544 for the single, 4427 on the multi-core. And over here on the right, 3527 for the single and 5933 for the multi Multi. now what does this mean in the real world well it basically means nada it means nothing because you've seen in the day-to-day -day, it's imperceivable the speed differences unless you have these side by side the human eye would never see the differences and most people wouldn't see them differences even in looking at this video so basically you know these are the same performing type iPads scrolling and everything is very on point you're never gonna notice a difference the only thing you're gonna notice is an Apple pencil if you do decide to purchase one but some things I don't think many people are mentioning about this ipad is you have to think about the fact that if you want the more higher capacity model and an apple pencil you're pushing over 500 dollars for an ipad you can find a used 12.9 pro from you know 2016 for about the same price and it's gonna be a 12.9 inch display also you know at that price you're already getting near ipad pro 10.5 territory if you find those on sale you can sometimes find them in the 600 range so you're basically almost at pro territory now if you go with 32 gig and this one and a keyboard you're still looking close to 500 so you know this ipad is not as cheap as no chromebook or anything like that and um yeah i would argue it's not even as cheap as last year's ipad because the whole incentive here to buy this new one is the pencil, which is more than buying last year's iPad, which didn't have pencil support altogether. But at the end of the day, last year's iPad was actually cheaper. Now, I know a lot of people are going to argue, well, that educational discount will still, you know, most of the educational discount is only going to apply to teachers and students. We're talking mainstream consumers, everyone here. Then you have to ask yourself, you know, because some people told me, hey, man, like, I really want to try that Apple Pencil. It's really cool to have a cheaper iPad with an Apple Pencil, which is cool. But at the same time, you have to ask yourself, how much are you going to use this? Because I bought this thing and I really do like to draw and stuff, but I I found drawing on an iPad is not like drawing on paper with a real pencil. It's got nice latency, but it's still a digital tool. It's very fun. But are you serious about drawing? Are you artistic like that? Do you really draw a lot? Then this can be great. Do you take notes a lot? Because I find taking notes with a keyboard is still a lot faster than just writing them out, you know, hand by hand with this 
uh, Apple Pencil right here. And I'm not trying to convince you away from the Apple Pencil. This is a great deal here overall. If you get the cheaper model, the 329 edition and the Apple Pencil, you're definitely way under a pro, but you really have to assess your needs. Do you really need the Apple Pencil or is it just a toy you wanna play with? At the end of the day, if it was my money, I would say if you're on a 2017 iPad, only think about the Apple Pencil because performance and camera and display and everything, it's the same thing. If you don't have a 2017 iPad, I would say just get the newer one because it's not that much cheaper right now. But if you can find the older model a lot cheaper and you know I'm never gonna use an Apple Pencil, I want this thing to read books and watch videos, then just get the older one because it's gonna be a lot cheaper if you can find a third party for like 220 or 250. But at the end of the day, this new iPad, still a great deal. Last iPad, also still a great deal. Both of them are good values. Any questions, comments, concerns, drop them down below in the comment section of this video. If you found this video helpful, enjoyable, also do me a favor and click that like button for me. Make sure you have notifications turned on to not miss any of my upcoming content. Nick here helping you to master your technology.